So last week you um we covered uh a couple types of material. Jenna had kindly shared with us our her expertise um on uh group model building, uh this uh element of human theater and, and building up models that can bring to the table the insights, perspectives, expertise, uh, understanding, lived experience of, of many parties. That sort of modeling can be pursued, or that sort of group model building can be pursued with any of the types of models built up here. And indeed, there's a there's good practice uh, for doing that. Um, it is something which requires planning, as I think you got a sense. And it's not a solitude from the sort of quantitative modeling that was our focus on Thursday and indeed today. Um, the causal loop diagrams that are built up or the basic system structure diagram, stock flow, top system, uh, top causal loops, um, they have mathematical relationships to the sort of stock flow models that we build and run as simulations. We we don't, in generally speaking, we can't directly simulate causal loop diagrams. Why not? Why can't we simulate causal loop diagrams coming out of those sort of sections? Anyone? Yes. Maybe just inconsistencies okay. in the time steps. So in some of the cases, the causal relationship might be slow and progressive, in which case it wouldn't emerge if we were to try and simulate a shorter time step. Okay, so um so so I think you're pointing to at a deeper level a uh the fact that causal loop diagrams um don't really pack into the description enough information about the exact quantitative timing, the, the specifics of the relationship between, by which, you know, A influences B, or I'd say A influences C and B influences C. We're, we leave that kind of fuzzy, right? Um, we, we might know there the directionality, um, the directionality associated with these, uh, but we don't know the specifics of the the C A divided by B, for example. As B goes up, B divided by B will tend to go down, right? Um, hence the minus. If A goes up, A divided by B will tend to go up. Yeah. That, that could be one interpretation, but there might be other interpretations uh, as well. I mean, it, could be a minus B, right? Or it could be that this is an outflow from C and this is an inflow to C. Um, there isn't enough, I'm gonna use a fancy term specificity, enough unambiguous specification of the relationship to allow for the very specific assumptions that are needed for, for simulating it over time, right? We, we don't even know sort of what's an element of state and what is just instantaneously changing. Yes. Yeah, so I guess no. in this sense, maybe it's not constrained to any consistency in your dimensions or anything, is that? Yeah, yeah, so you, so you are getting at some of the things that I was thinking about bringing up, that's right. Um, uh, normally we don't, nor most commonly, it's it's that we we don't think about associated dimensions here. Could we associate dimensions with this? Yes, we could actually. There's nothing, there's nothing preventing that, and that would start to constrain a possible understanding of this, right? Um, because dimensional consistency between things might imply only a subset of relationships are legitimate given how C is used. Um, but even, you know, stock flow relationships, um, which 
which have dimensional implications. I mean, after all, if you have a you have a stock and you have a flow out, and the stock is of dimension x, what's the dimension of the flow? The dimension x divided by time, you know. Um so it, it has implications, but even that stock flow notion isn't isn't really present here. What's an aspect of state? If there's a feedback loop, there needs to be some element of state changing in the world across this feedback. I mean, after all, you, you're not going to have instantaneous relationship between A and B in both directions instantaneously. It just simultaneously achieves it. That would be kind of like a simultaneous equation in A and B, which is, is not what we're trying to depict. We're trying to depict causal connections. And when there are feedbacks, it's generally acknowledged that there is some element of state here. So there's going to be some stock, if, if we think about it in a system dynamics uh, stock flow term, and there's going to be some flow somewhere in here, but we don't really break it out. Um, imposing some sort of dimensions could get into that. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is um, there, there are some specifics here, but it's a very abstract level of description. And we can pin it down more by weaving in a distinction of uh, distinctions involving dimensions. We could also weave it in more by distinguishing stocks and flows. And that produces something called a system structure diagram. Okay. A system structure diagram is like a causal, it's like a stock flow diagram, but without equations, without initial values for stocks. In other words, without formulas for the flows, mm -hmm. without specific values for quantities, but it does abstract, captures information about what's an element of state and what's an instantaneous relationship from one variable to another versus what's a, a flow to a stock relationship where A might flow into C. And so if A goes up, C will go up compared to the value it otherwise would have had, but it will go up over time, right? Because it's a flow. You know. hmm? But generally, these sort of causal diagrams, the, the, the level of specificity is not enough. It's not unambiguous enough to allow some like, yes, Danny. Uh, could you say that causal loop diagrams are more on a factual level or yeah. overall? Yes, the more abstract. Yeah. They, they, so abstraction is about hiding details and getting to a higher level of generality. This can describe many. Stock flow diagrams could be described by the same structure. And those stock flow diagrams might exhibit different behavior. Per Malcolm's comment, some of them might be dimensionally inconsistent with a particular labeling of dimensions here. Um, and putting in dimensional constraints would, would narrow what, what we can capture. But there is some relationship. And any given stock flow diagram, say this one over here, can in general be abstracted. I'm not saying this, this is specifically that, but there's many specific stock flow diagrams that might be abstracted to this. And so it does delineate kind of a subset of stock flow diagrams that are consistent with this um, in a way that's that's quite useful. And in general, if we have a stock flow diagram that's fully specified, we can produce from it, map it to a causal loop diagram. And in fact, the causal diagram with a, a system structure, which is a stock flow diagram without without formulas, without initial values, without specific values for parameters, which gets more information, but still not everything. But still, you know, we we can reason about things. We can reason about this being a balancing loop, and it's therefore likely to be associated with with plateauing behavior. Um, if it has some delay associated with it, it might be associated with plateauing behavior with some oscillation. If you have a positive feedback loop, it's associated with a 
it's commonly associated with what sort of behavior? Sorry? Yeah, reinforcing it. So we'd expect sort of exponential behavior in the most common context. Hmm? For those of a more mathematical bent, you might wonder why this is, but if you linearize these relationships, you get something like, you know, uh, dx dt um, might uh, might ultimately once you once you figure it out that the, the steps here be something proportional, approximately proportional to alpha x, and this will lead to e to the alpha t. Right. Um, for those who are more mathematical. Okay. Yeah, uh, Malcolm. Yeah, it was, like you mentioned, the causal loops can identify those reinforcing um, or yeah. balancing yeah. feedbacks. Is yeah. there, by extension, a, a common thing to look for if we're seeing if we can pick out where our aging chains might be, or is that something that emerges more? Yeah, it's a good question. With aging chains, you do get characteristic behavior. They're a higher level structure. They're sort of a, you know, in software engineering, some people have have uh, had the potentially traumatic experience of taking my 371 class. And um, uh, you may know um, from discussions in class or previous classes, 370, 270, that one of the threads of software engineering practice and research is what are called uh, software patterns. I think you folks are exposed to some of this in two in uh, two seven, if I'm not mistaken. But give me some mentions of patterns that come up in an object or any context. Anyone? Sorry. So I didn't. Model view control is sort of an architectural pattern. Excellent, excellent. I like that. Sort of a higher level pattern about the organization of the broader software. Um, and there's. Uh, a variety of others, microkernel architectures, layered patterns. How about, how about some others at sort of a smaller level? Visitor, facade, factory, any of those ring a bell? Uh, strategy, singleton, uh, finance. Don't worry, it's not on top of this. Uh, so, so when we build software, there's these set of idioms that we that have been found useful for describing software building software system these sort of patterns that keep on appearing again and again and it's like that with modeling and and sometimes we call the molecules actually in the system dynamics world these sort of things like um uh aging chains and they have characteristic beauty who who asked that question is that daniel or was that malcolm oh yeah that's malcolm yeah, they, they have characteristic behaviors associated with them. Yeah. We kind of saw that last time where, where we have not first order delays, but higher order delays in the early sort of slow, uh, sort of uh, slower movement through the system, almost like a pipeline through the system. People kind of move, move through it. Um, yeah. So, just, just some comments about the relationship of this sort of quantitative modeling to this. They're not solitudes. I mean, any quantitative model can be mapped up to this, can be abstracted into this. And this, what goes on at this level can constrain what models you might build. Uh, and the more information you build in, like uh, stock and flow structure, the more constrained our understanding or dimensional information, more constrained our our possible world of stock flow models might be. Okay. Um, so those were some comments on sort of relationship of stock flow and uh, and uh, system structure diagrams and causal loop diagrams. I'm 